call. Yes. Uh -huh. We are committed to maintaining the confidentiality, integrity, and security of your personal information. Mm -hmm. When you provide personal information, we believe that you should be aware of our policies to protect the confidentiality of that information. <laughs> We may collect non-public personal information about you from the following sources. Oh, information that we collect, information we may receive on your application or other forms of communication. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, without the protections of due process, you violated the, the privacy of my clients. Yes. Now... I know as a Series 24, yes, there are certain requirements of law, and you saying, well, somebody's mentally ill does not fit the bill. Pooh. Now, it's fraudulent to use forgeries to issue court orders. Yeah. It's fraudulent to not have the signature of the petitioner. Ooh. It's fraudulent to not have proof of service prior to having court hearings. <laughs> Now, this information that happens to be on all those applications for insurance products, yes, brokerage accounts and uh, NFA accounts, yeah, <laughs> you gave all of that to my wife without any due process. Every state of the United States mm -hmm, that has sworn that they would support and defend the Constitution, yes, I'm just focused on privacy laws this morning. <laughs> How many of those elected to office realize the importance of protecting the privacy of the consumer, <laughs> the individuals that you do business with? Oh, <laughs> now for every oath of office in each and every state of the United States that says, well, the full faith and credit, <laughs> you allowed for this county, yes, Jefferson County in the state of Washington, yeah, to enforce a protection on us. Well, you don't have to have her signature. There's some uh, exemption to the actual laws of the state of Washington. <clears throat> you can issue a 10-year protection order, yes, without any actual notice to the respondent, because that's what it says. There's no X in those little boxes. <laughs> You can issue a protection order where the petitioner doesn't have to acknowledge it, doesn't have to consent to it, doesn't have to have receipt of it, she doesn't have to obtain it herself, as if the state yes, had the legal right to have all the personal information of every person financial services. This is going to be a big lawsuit because I'm going to sue each and every state of the United States. I'm going to sue you for allowing for this court in this state to enforce a protection order without any actual due process to the respondent. You've been making up bullshit about what the actual law allows for. You remember that judge's manual on domestic violence? I, I emailed you some screen prints from it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you do have to protect the rights of the respondent. <laughs> You do have to have proof of service. <laughs> you can't just say that you attempted twice in 48 days when you can only issue a temporary protection order for 14 days. Yes. You can't serve an individual in the public library. <laughs> you can't serve someone other than the respondent because the respondent happened to be a business owner. Oh, <laughs> happened to have clients. Now, why don't you remove your fraud from the United States of America? I'm going to want my sons today. I'm going to want custody of them. And if you get sued from any client that I have for not protecting their privacy, it's not my liability. I told you it was against the law. Ooh, look at all those clients I used to have. They all thought I was going to get sued for divulging their personal information. <laughs> As if it was my fault that you refused to enforce the fucking fraud. Like, <laughs>